I've noticed some people seem to have a bit of confusion over the ending of The Dark Knight Rises, and in particular Robin John Blake's role in the end. At the end of the film, John Blake is revealed to have the legal name of Robin Blake. And for those of you who haven't seen my other videos, Bale and Nolan never said that there would be no Robin in their films. Those reports had no source and were just rumors. So the first question people ask is why would they have Robin be Blake's name instead of just saying he is Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, or Jason Todd? Well, for a few reasons actually. The first reason is because they wanted the reveal to be for the general audience. What does that mean? That means people who don't know much about the comics or any other form of Batman. People just looking to watch a good movie, not a comic book movie. If they went with Dick Grayson or any other Robin's name as a reveal, then the general audience would be shaking their heads and ask, why was that important? So instead, they have his name be Robin because the audience, in their limited knowledge of the Batman mythos, would cheer as they did when I saw the Midnight Showing. Everyone was in a roar of joy as they heard Blake be called Robin. People know who Robin is, but not necessarily who his daytime persona is. The second reason is because Robin Blake is a mixture of all three male Robins. They took the fact that Dick Grayson was a police officer and an orphan that Bruce had identified with in the comics. Tim Drake's detective skills and ability to deduce that Bruce Wayne and Batman is the same person as in the comics, as well as Jason Todd's rage as seen when Blake describes the rage he felt when his father was shot to death for gambling money. He is all in one, a jack of all the male Robins, although the closest match of John Blake would be Tim Drake, seeing as the detective skills were one of Blake's major abilities and he was able to deduce, deduce that Batman was Bruce Wayne, as well as the fact that Blake kept trying to help Batman. In the comics, it was Tim Drake that convinced Batman that Batman needs a Robin. The third reason is because if John Blake was named Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, or Tim Drake, there would be certain expectations of the character that Nolan simply could not fulfill within his version of Bruce Wayne and Batman's story. If he was Dick Grayson, we'd ask, why isn't he a circus acrobat? Why is he so old? Why isn't he in costume? or Nightwing. If he was Jason Todd, we'd ask, is he going to die? Is he going to kill people and be the version of Batman that kills? And if he was Tim Drake, we'd ask, why is he a cop? Why is he an orphan? Why is he an orphan? Tim Drake didn't start out as an orphan. But as John Blake, we'd have to go with the story as he is an original character and our comic knowledge has no restrictions on the matter. Then, when he's revealed as Robin Blake, we can s then say, this man embodies the idea of Robin, that we know to be true. He is indeed Nolan's trilogy's Robin. If Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns can have its own Robin, why can't the Dark Knight trilogy? As a side note, Catwoman is never referenced as such. She is a cat burglar in the film to fit with the more realistic Nolan version of the character. And then, in that same aspect, John Blake is Robin John Blake. Does that mean he's going to use Robin as his hero name? Maybe he won't. Maybe he won't have a hero name, just as Catwoman did it. But the audience will refer to him as Robin because we know he's Robin, just as we know that the cat burglar is Catwoman. Maybe Gordon and Lucius will refer to him as Robin because they know who he is. But the criminals of Gotham Citizens won't. It's all just possibilities at the moment. Some people believe he will become Nightwing. I actually don't believe this. There's no hint as to him becoming Nightwing per se. And once again, we must put the general audience at ease. Robin is Nightwing? But isn't Robin a different hero than Nightwing? Confusion would ensue. If Robin Blake was revealed as Dick Grayson, I could see him becoming Nightwing. But he wasn't. Now that we got past the question of why his name is Robin John Blake, we can tackle the next question. When he is given a cave, if he's supposed to, is he supposed to be the next Batman? No. He is to become Robin, the next hero of Gotham in a new legacy. Why do I know this? Let's start with the most obvious reason. Batman is dead. When the ads for the movie said the legend ends, they were right. The legend of Batman is over and done with. Gotham knows he's dead and he's not coming back. For Robin Blake to take on the Batman identity would be to take away Batman's goal. Wait, but what was Batman's goal? His goal was to t shake people out of apathy, for people not to sit idly by and let evil take over, to inspire others to do what's right. 
The day Batman isn't needed is the day that people begin to take action and be proactive in fighting evil and bringing justice. That's what the Dent Act did for a while, but it was based on a lie. Batman doesn't want to have people copy him. He said as much in a dark night when telling Alfred, That's not exactly what I meant when I said I wanted to inspire others. Robin Blake would not copy Batman. He's simply someone inspired by Batman. When Batman said anyone can be Batman, he did not mean literally. He even said Commissioner Gordon was Batman for helping young Bruce. That doesn't mean he expects Commissioner Gordon or the people of Gotham to dress up like him and fight crime. To be Batman is to do the right thing, to help others. Batman mentions to Robin Blake that he should wear a mask if he intends to fight alone to protect those he cares about. Batman doesn't mean for Robin to wear a Batman mask, but for Robin to wear his own mask. At the will reading, Bruce leaves the Batcave to Robin Blake. Not for him to be Batman, but for him to use the resources Bruce was afforded. He wants Robin Blake to be the next legend. As you notice, Robin Blake doesn't see the Batman costume when he is in the Batcave. If it was intended for Robin to be Batman, then they'd show the Batman costume vault rise from the ground, which they did not. Also notice how Robin swings into the cave. He will approach things differently than Bruce. They are not the same person. When he swung in, it actually reminded me of Batman Forever, when Dick Grayson tells Alfred how he was nicknamed Robin. Dick tells Alfred that he saved his brother when his brother's trapeze wire broke and he swung out and grabbed him. His father told him that he flew in like a Robin. And if that's not enough evidence for you, let's look at something else. Talia took over for her father, but she did not do it her father's way. She's working with Bane, which her father did not allow. She's an altogether different beast from her father. Instead of working behind the scenes like Raja Ghul did, she reveals a plan through Bane to everyone. Robin Blake would do the same thing in that the way he follows Bruce's footsteps won't be the same. They are different. Blake will not be Batman. Now how about Bruce Wayne? Has his story fully ended? He is happy and he is with Selina, which is good. Very reminiscent of the Batman the Animated Series episode Perchance to Dream, or Batman Brave and the Bolts episode The Knights of Tomorrow. But there is something Raja Ghul once said that may mean that his story could still continue. Bruce and Selina wiped their identities, but Raja Ghul said in Batman Begins, The world is too small for someone like Bruce Wayne to disappear, no matter how deep he chooses to sink. What about Gordon? Well, in the story arc in the comics, Robin searched for a hero. Robin searched for a Batman who had gone missing. Eventually, Commissioner Gordon relies on Robin to protect the city. Gordon even gets a Robin signal in the sky to replace Batman's bat symbol. That scene at the end of the film, with Commissioner Gordon touching the bat signal, wondering what's going to happen next, reminded me of the scene in the comics where Gordon uses the Robin signal. Ever since Tim Drake was Robin, Robin wasn't particularly anyone's sidekick. Tim was actually the first Robin to get his own series where Robin faced many threats on his own without being aided by Batman. Robin can work alone, has worked alone, and can be a standalone hero if approached correctly. So Robin Blake can easily make it on his own, even without Batman. Although it would be awesome to see them work together on the big screen. Morgan Freeman has said in an interview on the Today Show, that he has a sense a Robin film is in the works. That doesn't mean it is, but the option is there for DC to pursue. Bruce can come back, Robin can be a standalone hero as it's been done before, or they can just reboot everything. Nolan's done. Now we need Nolan's Robin figure to take up the mantle and do things his, in his own way, but with Nolan's inspiration. Could his brother be that Robin figure? Maybe. Jonah Nolan did write the films with his brother, and Jonah did say, I'm still hoping to get across the finish line as a writer. The very next thing I want to do, personally, is direct a feature. If you haven't already, check out my video on the mailing campaign Batman fans will be joining to bring back Stephanie Brown, the first official female Robin, back into the Bat family. I, along with fans of Batman, Stephanie Brown, Robin, Batgirl, and other Bat family members, hope you join us. The mailing campaign will start on August 10th. Thank you for your time.